Joining us now from the Republican National Committee headquarters here in Washington is the incoming White House Chief of Staff, Ryan Priebus. You're still chairman of the party. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, what exactly does incoming President-elect Donald Trump believe about Russian efforts to meddle in the election? Well, I think he believes uh, many of the things that we all believe, which is, you know, Russia and other countries have been hacking and, and, and attempting to attack American institutions uh, for years, that uh, Russia's uh, attack on American elections has been going back for uh, over 50 years, so this is nothing new. Um, and the fact that this particular hack was perpetrated uh, by Russian entities is something that no one is disputing. But I think one of the issues here, John, and one of the issues that isn't really being covered is that we have one of the two biggest political parties in the world, the DNC, that sat there like a sitting duck, allowed these entities into their, into their uh, computer systems. By their own admission, they said that they lacked the training. Uh, and that they didn't respond to the FBI me, when they called. I understand, but, but he'll be president of the United States, not the head of the DNC. So on this question of, you say uh, no yeah, one but, was disputing this, but let me just, over the last couple of months, Donald Trump has resolutely disputed the findings of the intelligence agencies, and he's gone beyond that. He's not just been skeptical. He has compared the findings on this question of Russian hacking to the biggest blunder the intelligence agencies have made on Iraq. He said it was politically motivated. He said it was a part of a witch hunt. He has been solid in disputing it. So it seems like you're, you're saying he's changed his mind. No, I think we're, we're, you're just conflating two different things. I mean, on one hand, you have the fact that Russia, China, other countries cyber attack the United States all the time. But on the other hand, you also have a President uh, Obama who two weeks before he leaves office, after he knew about these things had been going on since 2015, decides to then put out the biggest sanctions that we've ever put out on Russia in this regard in the history of America. When the Chinese hacked the OPM, we didn't hear anything that happened after that. Let me so there's a political angle here. Wait a second. There's a political angle here, John, that is clearly politically motivated to discredit the victory of uh, President-elect Trump. That's, I think that's, that is uh, absolutely un indisputable. The reason why the DNC piece matters is that the reason this particular hack was so large wasn't necessarily because the effort was so great by the Russians. It was that it was so easy. I mean, John well, Podesta's password into his system, you know what his password was? Password. The fact that you, that you had the Donna Brazil admitting that the DNC lacked the Mr. training. Chairman which allowed all of this material to be released is incredible. I mean, I, it let me matters. Go back, let me go back to Donald Trump, who will be leader of the free world and will have to work with the intelligence agencies. Uh, Director Clapper said that there is a difference between skepticism and disparagement. So he has categorized the, uh, the uh, remarks that Donald Trump has made as disparaging of those, of those intelligence agencies. So when Donald Trump met with the intelligence briefers on Friday, did he apologize for that disparagement? The first thing that Donald Trump did when he, after that meeting in his statement was to commend the men and women of the intelligence community. It was the very first thing he did. It was the very first thing in his statement. But let me just go back for a second, John. When President Obama put out the sanctions against Russia uh, a week ago, our first reaction was we need to get a briefing on this issue, which created, what created this immediate reaction of President Obama, and we went into action to get the briefing as quickly as possible on Tuesday that we thought the president had that created the reaction that took place uh, a few days earlier. So when President-elect Trump moved forward through the weekend and on Tuesday, and we attempted to get that briefing, we since learned that the actual report wouldn't be done until Wednesday. Hang on, I'm getting to your point. So it turned out that the report wasn't completed until Wednesday, and we weren't going to get the briefing until Friday. That tweet that you're referring to, and Mr. Clapper responded to, Mr. the intelligence briefing, in quotes, was a frustrating situation in Let that we couldn't even get a briefing on what caused the reaction of Obama because the report wasn't done until Wednesday. It's not disparagement. I, it's a matter of, hey, can I get the information Mr. here? Chair, Mr. Chairman, it's disparagement when you compare the findings of the intelligence agencies to their worst blunder uh, in, in modern history. When you, when you compare it there to the findings no, on Iraq... Hang on, John. I mean, there was you no... You're you wrong. There was Mr. no... Mr. Chairman, did you not compare them to the Iraq war? 
Did the Trump uh, transition compare them to the Iraq war blunder? I didn't, I didn't compare them to the, the, the Iraq did. war blunder. But we're not talking about that, John. We're but, talking about Mr. Chairman, what created... But, the, what but you, created did, you did do the that. Tweet, the transition no, did do that. No, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can say that all day long. What we're but talking about... But that's because about it's the truth, Mr. Chairman. ...is the fact that President Obama, President Obama put out sanctions on the Thursday or the Wednesday, okay. whatever that Let date was. Let me ask was. you about it, another we attempted to get We attempted to get the briefing... That on that particular Mr. issue Chairman. on that Tuesday, and we found out that the report wasn't even completed until Wednesday. Let me so the intelligence briefing, in quotes, was in response to that situation. Let me move on to Obamacare, which is coming up. Donald Trump would like to see repeal and replace happen at the same time. Is that right? Um, you know, look, we're, I'm not going to get into exactly where this is going to go, but I will tell you that it would be ideal if we could do it all in one big action. But look, it may take time to get all the elements of the replace in, in place. You might have to use reconciliation for part of it, which is a 50 vote majority. There are other parts of the replacement, uh, such as uh, allowing people and companies to cross state lines, allowing for open pricing, allowing for healthcare pooling. That may take 60 votes. So the full replacement may take more time uh, than an instantaneous so it sounds uh, like he would action, but our our intent is to make it happen as quickly as possible. The so repeal and the full replace as fast as we can. Senator Rand Paul said something that sounded like Donald Trump would not support what you've just said, which is more like a repeal and delay. So it sounds like there's uh, some wiggle room there now from the president-elect in terms of the pacing no. of this. I don't think so at all. I mean, if you can get 60 votes, you know, within a few weeks and get all of those elements of Rand Paul's uh, bill in the place, that would be great. But I think we all understand that things sometimes do take some time, and the full repeal and replace uh, may take a little bit more time, but it's going to happen as quickly as possible. Quick question on replace. Donald Trump has uh, campaigned on the idea of not touching Medicare. That'll be his position still? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think Donald, I don't think President-elect Trump wants to uh, meddle with Medicare or Social Security. Uh, he made a promise in the campaign that that was something that he didn't want to do. But what he wants to do is grow the economy, help shore up Medicare and Social Security for future generations. And if we can get three to five, six percent growth, we'll do that. And we'll explode the economy and bring jobs back and make trade more fair uh, across the world. Uh, lower rates for everyone. And, and I think hopefully uh, get businesses going again so people can put more money in their pocket. All right. Chairman Wright's previous incoming White House Chief of Staff, thanks so much. And we'll be back in a minute with Democratic Senator Cory Booker. Stay with us.